What, what would you say would be your, your greatest spiritual experience? I guess the time, John, when I, when I really received the testimony of the Gospel. I, um, I never doubted the, the truth of this Gospel, ever. I was raised in a good home with wonderful parents. And their par there were people who lived the Gospel themselves. And I depended as a kid on their testimony. I knew they said the Gospel was true, it was true, and I didn't need to worry about it. That was all. And that was all. <clears throat> I didn't need to ex have an ex any special witness because uh, their testimony was good enough for me. And that's the way I felt when I went on my mission. I thought, I wonder if I ought to go. I really can't say that I know this gospel is true. And then I think of mother and father, and I said, well, if they said it's true, that's good enough for me. I know it must be. Well, anyway, um, I hadn't been in the mission field very long. When President Jensen called me, and he told me, he said, Sister Jepson, uh, we see that uh, we were some first missionaries ever, uh, lady missionaries in that mission. Wow. Oh, it was a new mission, mm -hmm. just opened up. President Justin was the first mission president. Mm -hmm. And uh, he said, uh, the elders are out working hard and they're making some converts. And uh, we're getting enough people now coming into the church that we, we, we want to form little relief societies wherever we can. And he said, uh, I'm going to put, I want to put you over the... Uh, Farming of these new branch relief societies in the Hamilton district. Now that's where we live, uh, worked. I want to put you in, over. And he said, I'd like you to visit these, uh, go and get these little branches organized, and then visit them about once a month and help them out, and sh show them what relief society work is, and uh, um, just uh, get them get them started. Well. <clears throat> uh, this is pretty big uh, challenge for a young girl who just landed the mission field. You bad. And uh, in those days, there was no cars. We traveled by car. We traveled by train. Well, the missionaries had, had just converted a very fine family up in a place called Kitchener, Ontario, and uh, uh, a, a few other people to come in. They wanted to organize a branch relief society. So President just told us to go up there and organize a branch relief society. So one afternoon, we got on the train, it was Zilla, Jones and I, we got on the train and uh, we went up to Kitchener, <clears throat> and I remember the elders met us at the depot, and uh, they were going to show us where we could stay that night. Well, when we got talking to the elders, they told us that uh, they were taking us to the home of brother and sister Willis. They were a wonderful family who had just come into church within the last year. And they were new converts, but they were sure good ones. And they had a large family, and these, a lot of their children were married, and they were trying to get their children and their children's mates interested in the gospel. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, uh, <laughs> this is what kind of shook me. They said, tonight we're having a cottage meeting at the Willis home, and we've invited quite a lot of people, and a lot of friends and the people we met out in our tracking to come, and Brother Willis's married kids are coming. And, uh, and then he, when the elders turned me in, and said, Sister uh, Perry, sure to be one of the main speakers. <laughs> <laughs> I was wishing I was a thousand miles away. <laughs> right then and there. And I thought, oh my heavens. Now I could go and organize a release society. I thought that wouldn't be such a difficult task. But how in the world was I going to get up and speak for a, a good-sized crowd of people and tell them about the gospel and not be able to tell them I knew it was true? That was what was bugging me, because I did not have a special witness of it. And I was just sick. I was just possibly sick. So we got to the Willis home, met the Willis's, and we were really impressed with them. And Sister Willis showed us upstairs to a nice bedroom where we were going to spend the night. And... Uh, and we started getting ready to get cleaned up to come to the meeting. And as we came in, we noticed some people already arriving. Mm -hmm. And they had quite a large home, quite a large dining room and, and uh, living room. It was right together, kind of. We had quite a large space and had chairs all around it. And a few people were, had already come in. So we went up to the room and uh, we kind of cleaned ourselves up some and, uh, and uh, had prayer and then 
we're going to go down. And I said to Zella, you go ahead, go on down. I said, uh, I can't, uh, I want to stay behind for a few minutes. Uh, I'll come. So she went downstairs, and um, um, when she, after she'd gone, I tell you, I never talked so hard to the Lord in my life. <laughs> I said, I just feel terrible to think that I'm out here preaching the gospel and cannot tell these people I know without a shadow of a doubt that it's true. I said, please help me, please help me, so I'll know that. Now, I can't tell you what happened. But something happened to me that I shall never, ever forget. It was it, when the Holy Ghost comes on you. I tell you, and you may have had that experience, John. You may know what I'm talking about. You too, sure. You may know too. But anyway, I was really, really shaken like I'd never been shaken before in my whole life. And uh, I cried. And uh, uh, if you miss, Della came up. She wondered why I wasn't I hadn't come down. And when she opened the door, uh, she almost stepped back. She said, what's happened? What's happened to this room? She could feel it, see? And uh, I couldn't hardly tell her for crying. But anyway, I told her a little bit enough to satisfy her. And we went down to the meeting, and I don't remember what I said. I don't remember what topic I developed. I don't remember anything about it when I went on that meeting, except that when I got through talking, I bore my testimony for the first time in my life that I knew that the things I had said were true. And <laughs> that, I think, was the most spiritual experience that I really have ever had, really. Mm -hmm. And I felt that very same thing once after that. It was after Dad died. And I was in our dining room but I, up in Idaho Falls, and I know Dad was there just as well as, as I know you're where you are now. And I felt that same spirit again. So I felt it twice in my life. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's the spirit of the Holy Ghost, what yeah. it is. And it's a marvelous thing. That was a real comfort to you after yes. your dad died to yes, experience that, I'm sure. I just felt like Dad was helping me. Uh -huh. I'll tell you, what, when, it, when it happened, it was a time when I was selling the place. Oh, really? When I really felt like I needed help. Uh -huh. And I hadn't asked for it, yeah. but there he was. And I, after that, I didn't worry because I just felt like he was right there to help me. When you're selling the place to come down here. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, that's neat. Because uh, I found, I knew then, after I had that experience, that that's what they wanted me to do. That's what Dad wanted me to do, and that's what the Lord wanted me to do. Uh-huh. And I was doing what I should have been doing. Mm, so all those are those uh, yeah. spiritual experiences I've ever had. Well, really, if we have one or two experiences like that in our life, that's about all we, all we need. Mm -hmm. All we need. And it's the Holy Ghost that reveals it to us, I tell you. Mm -hmm. We don't need to see anything in particular. We don't need to see it. <clears throat> but when the Revelator reveals it to us, there's just no question about it. Yeah. I had that feeling when I read the first read the Book of Mormon through. Yeah. And came to that last uh, statement. If you want to know if these things are true, just ask of the Lord. And yeah. He will give us. They're really not braid us not, and, and uh, so I did. And I, it was a, an electric flying. Yeah, that's experience. right. I have felt that too about that passage, John. Well, maybe not quite as strong, but I sure felt that. I know what you're talking about. The same thing. I, 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 knelt down and, and uh, the feeling came to me just that, uh, no shadow of doubt. That's right. That, that book is true. That's right. It was for a purpose. And the next time I had that feeling was when I first saw Char. Yeah. yeah. And uh, something said to me just, I hadn't even spoken to her, but something said to me, uh, that's your wife. Yeah. Yes, I can well believe that. I think uh, we knew one another before we ever came to this world. I think it was all prearranged. And if we live so that we are worthy of it, it'll, it'll happen that way, too. Is it off now, honey? No, it's still going. Why don't we go over and get my mom and say hello or something? Well, I'm not sure. Well, good. How much longer is it going to go on? Oh, uh, it's about over. Well, let's turn it mm -hmm. off, then.
I've got it. Uh, it's on. It's on the long distance. Oh, come on, let's get it. So oh yes. Oh, I'm glad you thought of that. Well, we think you're wonderful. Well, I'll uh, tell you, <laughs> couldn't have better kids than you. I just love you both. You're great. You're just wonderful. I'll tell you. And you tell good stories too. <laughs> I wish I had that many good stories, Mom. You do that. You do. Uh, talking about your life, you would charge. I don't know. They're just life's experiences. They're not really stories. They're the things that actually happen. I know, but you really tell them in a good way. Oh, well, that's good. Well, I hope that this turns out good. I hope so, too. <laughs> I hope so, too. You bet. <laughs> sure do love you both. We there. love you, Mom. Uh, You're a great matriarch of this family. Oh, I don't know about that, but I'm glad I'm I'm glad I'm a part of the family. That's, that's wonderful.